Hello everybody and welcome to an exciting video because we have uh, out of nowhere uh, a new parallel investigator that we get to check out. And not only is it a new parallel investigator, it is my personal favorite in terms of feel, character, lore, ability even, Jim Culver. That's right. It's time for Parallel Jim Culver, Culver, and we're gonna see how the heck this guy may or may not have changed. Let's check out this preview of the next Parallel Investigator for Arkham the Card Game, presented by designer Duke Harris. The dead don't rest. No matter where you go, you hear them talking, whispering, weeping, screaming. Sometimes to each other, sometimes alone. They ramble on about the people they loved, or their job, or their money. They tend to the floorboards before they died. Usually, it's about food or drink. The dead are always hungry. Sometimes when they realize you can hear them, they crowd round real close and whisper in your ear, last wishes and such. You can try and help when you can, but usually the folks they want you to take care of are dead too. You make a lot of empty promises, but at least that keeps them quiet. The, the unquiet dead have called out and Jim Culver has answered. We are pleased to reintroduce Jim Culver to the Arkham Horror of the Card Game, this time in his parallel form. Let's go! Read on to learn more. One of the earliest investigators in Arkham Miller card game uh, returns with a similar emphasis on token manipulation and play. I mean, that makes sense. We, uh, his whole identity is, uh, you know, skulls, so it's going to have to still be with tokens. Otherwise, it wouldn't feel like Jim. Uh, the cursed musician, however, has gained deeper insight into the mysteries of the mythos. By revealing a, a curse or skull token, Jim Culver can rep replenish a charge in one of his spell or ritual assets. Interesting. Okay. So here we got Parallel Jim Culver. 4332, so same stat line, I'm pretty sure. Um, I actually don't know what his actual stat line is. I think it's 43332. For some reason, in my mind, it was like 4233, but I know that's wrong. It's definitely 4332. Yeah, okay, so it's the same stat line as last time. Okay, Blue Star is asking, what are the parallel investigators? They're alternate print and play versions of the existing investigator so it's like taking an investigator that already exists and providing a different version of them that is one free to play because they're print and play and two usually they're a bit more advanced than their original counterpart okay so after you reveal one or more curse or skull tokens during a skill test you're performing replenish one charge on an asset you control limit once per round elder sign effect is plus two hey he actually has an elder sign <laughs> Uh, you may treat this token as if it were a skull or a curse token instead. That's very interesting. I think the curse token is actually kind of a neat little thing there. I dig the hell out of it. So, uh, looking at this just head on here, apply directly to the forehead. Uh, skull tokens now are not something that are just easy for Jim. Um... They're not easy for Jim. They're just like, they're now a positive for Jim. So it's interesting. They're not like a just, it doesn't just make the bag easier. There's now a reason that skulls are a little bit more exciting to draw. Uh, how do you, can you get them? They're free to play on the print on um, Fantasy Flight's website. So you can print and play them yourself. You can print them in paper, cut them out and put them into sleeves. Or you can get them printed professionally somewhere else on your own. But there's no official way that you can buy these investigators. All right. With enough support for Cursor Token Manipulation built into his deck, Jim can keep spells like Shriveling or Forbidden Relics such as Grotesque Statue topped off. I mean, that actually is really sick. A, a Grotesque Statue that never ends? I, I kind of dig it. Like, yeah, obviously, synergy with spell um, assets that attack, that seems great, right? But I kind of really like it with that. Can you? On an asset you control. Okay, so yeah, so the, the, I was confused for a second. I was like, wait, can you do it on Grotesque Statue? Because it says, can replenish on charge on one of his spell or ritual assets. Uh, but, and I was like, wait, this isn't a spell or a ritual. But notably, it's actually just on an asset you control. So, uh, let's give Jim the uh, axe and have him go nuts. This power comes at a price, however. Flooding the Chaos Bag with Cursed Tokens carries out his own inherent risk. And if Jim doesn't arm himself with cards such as Armageddon, let's go, or Dark Ritual, you know, that's also that's also a way of doing it. 
uh, he may find powers to go beyond or too uh, for the powers that beyond are too great to control. With Jim's new deck building options, uh, well, sorry, while Jim's new deck building options remove greater access to Mystic cards, he can now include Mystic cards level zero to three. Okay, he gains access to spell and cursed cards. Okay, with access to a full suite of cursed cards across many different classes, this version of Jim Culver knows how to harness the forces of the other side to even greater effect. All of this is complemented by Jim's new advanced signatures. The advanced Jim's Trumpet. Alright. Oh, look at those symbols! Look at those symbols you can commit for. Uh, when a skull or curse token is revealed during a skill test, perform an exhaust Jim's Trumpet. Heal one horror from each investigator and ally asset at your location or connection location. Holy crap! Holy crap! That's a that's a that's a big upgrade for the skull for for the trumpet. Sorry, Jim's trumpet was also like already a very good card. Um, that's kind of sick though. Like that's a that's a good that's a powerful upgrade. Just a lot of healing. Uh, also, like the curse token means it's a lot more likely to trigger, which is awesome. Causing the effect for each investigator analysis location calculation. While advanced final rhapsody provides even greater threat to Jim's health and sanity when drawn. Okay. Advanced Final Rhapsody. Reveal five Chaos Tokens of the Chaos Bag for each non-Elder Sign, non-Blessed Symbol Token revealed. Take a damage and a horror. Okay. Uh, is it one resource cheaper? Uh, great question. I don't think so. I think the original Trumpet was also um, two cost. I've played a lot of Jim. Yeah, it's two cost. So same same cost for the trumpet. All right. So final rhapsody reveal five chaos for each non bless non elder sign symbol token revealed. So curse tokens, frost tokens, um, the future sand tokens. Don't worry about it. They're not spoilers. And also like basically skulls, cultists, tablets, squids, auto fails. Uh, yeah, that's certainly a boost. You kind of expect the regular. You kind of expect the regular. Final Rhapsody to deal you about two damage. And I think this one probably will balance out around three damage for its norm. Three damage and horror. So it's certainly scarier. Um, but it's certainly not that much scarier. Like, uh, like it, it reads scarier. Um... And deny it doesn't work because it's for each, right? No, it would work for this one because you're not making a choice. So deny would work for half of it. So because there's no choice, you're able to deny half of it. It only doesn't work it if there's like a choice. So for each point you fail by, choose to either take a horror or discard a card. In which case it's not going to happen batches, it's going to happen individually. Um, yeah, so I think this card reads scarier than it actually is going to be the majority of the time. Because Final Rhapsody will usually deal one or two damage and horror. So I think this one's probably going to be three damage and horror. Which admittedly is a lot. But the idea in Jim is that you don't take damage during the Mythos phase. Right? Like, because he's a mystic. So hopefully that carries over. But this is a, this is a scarier upgrade for sure. I'm not going to just sit here and be like, this is fine. I do think it is more likely to deal you more damage, and it could potentially deal you 5 and 5, which I think is really exciting. Alright, Investigators who choose to take on the back of Parallel Gym also gain newfound access to a host of ghostly apparitions. What the fuck? The spirit deck. Okay, things are about to get a little bit funky. <laughs> they, uh, they, there was a, they buried the lead on this. They buried the lead a little bit. Um, okay. Mystic cards level 0 to 3, spell and curse 0 to 4. So we'll check out what's in his pool before we close out the video. Up to 5 other survival cards level 0. So he could still, still scavenge, which is nice. He's always felt like a survivor, so the survivor makes sense. Jim's, Trump is fi Jim's Trumpet Final Rhapsody, The Beyond, and one random basic weakness. Spirit deck size, what the fuck? <laughs> they, they really, like, like, they really, uh... Th there's a plot twist in the halfway through this article. Uh, that was unexpected. I was like, okay, so Jim, just Jim, he charges, charges, but now apparently he has a spirit deck. Okay. S 
Spirit deck building options. Nine different ally assets from any class level 0 to 2. Vengeful Shade. Special deck and spirit deck instructions. Shuffle the spirit deck separately from your deck and place the next beyond asset face down. This deck may be upgraded separately using your unspent experience. Okay, so there's something funky happening here. So the new double side of the Beyond permanent, why is, I love this, oh, Beyond A, Beyond B, I see. Jim Culver can build a deck of 10 different ghostly allies at the start of each turn. All right, let's just read what they do before we go too far. Oh, love the art. Bleak Netherworld. Jim Culver deck permanent. Each attached spirit loses all printed traits and gains the Geist trait. When damage or horror would be placed on attached spirit, it must be placed on Jim Culver instead. Okay. When your turn begins, attach the top card of the spirit deck to the Beyond as a spirit. If four more spirits are attached, flip this card and resolve its text. Force, one at a time, choose each non-weakness spirit attached to the beyond and reveal a random token from the chaos bag. If it is an elder sign token, you may heal, sorry, one at a time, choose each non-weakness spirit attached and reveal a random token from the chaos bag. If it is an elder sign, you may heal, either heal one horror or attach the top card of the spirit deck to the beyond as a spirit. Do not reveal tokens for the spirit you attach after resolving this effect. An auto fail token, discard the spirit, take a direct damage and horror. Is that or horror? Slash is or, right? Um... Skull token, discard the spirit, heal a horror. Uh, cultist, tablet, um, squid, or curse. You can discard the spirit or take one direct damage. Any other token, discard the spirit. Flip this card back to its asset side. Reminder. Reminder text. Let's go. Um, spirits attached to beyond are in play, but only retain their names and text boxes. Spirits do not take up slots and do not have health or sanity values. When a unique spirit is attached to beyond... Any other asset that shirt's name is already played is discarded. Spirits are always discarded to the bottom of the spirit deck. Interesting. And then we have the Vengeful Shade. Hunter Prey, Jim Culver only. You may have fight or evade the enemy while it's attached to the beyond. If you succeed, discard it. If you fail, spawn and engage with you. When you attach a spirit to the beyond via its forced effect, Vengeful Shade attacks you. So we got a little bit of like the... Um, the... The Watcher from another dimension here. It probably is a direct damage and horror. It's weird that they wrote it that way and didn't just put end horror. So, you know? Okay, so then how it works... You basically get allies, right? So you basically just, like, amass allies. You get their text box... <laughs> so you can, like, have four allies in play. They lose the ally trait. So do they resolve? They probably resolve their uh, enter play effects, right? So, like, you could do, like, laboratory assistant and draw two cards. It says attach, but I imagine they enter play, right? So, like, you don't care about anything but their text box. Now, obviously, as well, if you would... You can use, like, Beat Cops. You can use, like, Beat Cops to deal damage. But the damage goes on Jim Horror... Uh, Jim Culver instead. I actually think that's really sick with Field Agent. Doesn't that kind of seem really cool with Field, field Agent? So a field agent, you can exhaust it and deal a horror to it um, and discover clue location. So that's like Jim. And then you just like, you know, heal with your trumpet or like other healing. Yeah, Jim will take the horror instead. Won't stay and play with more than a few rounds, which is probably a good thing, right? Like you basically get like four rounds. You get like four rounds and then it resets, right? Uh, four rounds and then it resets. Four rounds and then it resets. I love it. I think that's very interesting. I think this to me is a very much a parallel investigator. Max three in play? Yeah, max three in play, I was gonna say. Um very interesting. It's I mean it's definitely like nine different ally assets. Okay, you know what? Let's let's uh let's just look at some allies. Give me uh, XP less than three. Let's just see what's cooking in this kitchen. 
<sighs> I mean, I love Art Student. I think Art Student's sick. Um, Arcane Initiate seems kind of funny. Seems kind of bad. You probably just play that in your deck, right? There's, yeah, there's a lot of allies. B-Cop. Cat Burglar seems cool as well. Ghost of a Cat Burglar. Some reserve something about replenishing charges. Yeah, the replenishing charges now, they really, sh like I said, they buried the lead. They should have started with this because this is like the parallel gym. This right here is like, they show up as ghosts for free. So you get one free each turn. This is actually what parallel gym is. This is the whole parallel gym. It, it has all everything that parallel investigators have. It's uh, it's new. It's complicated. We would never see it in an official release. So yeah, uh, this is actually what Parallel Jim is. The other stuff about how him replacing stuff, that's just fluff on top of it. This is the true Jim uh, Parallel Jim. Yeah, an extra card with rules text. I mean, I know. Uh, okay, first off, the Arkham Horror community, you guys complain too much. That's what I'm gonna just say right now, just like right off the bat, you guys, it, you, too much complaining. Uh, two, this is the perfect place for them to do these crazy, um, designs. Uh, would you want this in a, you would have a, an aneurysm if this was released in an official, um, in an official product. So like, this is the best place for it. And Holy Helicopter, you're hundred percent right. The, uh, the beyond is actually connected to the parallel back. So you could do regular Jim Culver front and the parallel back. If for some reason you wanted to treat the skulls as zeros. Very interesting. Okay, back to allies. Get the trumpet, lose the trumpet. I like it with David. I think with David it's kind of fun. Especially if you get him like second or third. Just get some reason to do on him and then he just dies himself most likely. I mean, Dr. Milan's sick. Oh. Yeah, and then you're you're right, Gabriel. This they did like this is like the parallel investigators are literally free. <laughs> There's like you you also can easily ignore them. So just if if they make you mad, go get us ice cream cone and don't worry about them. Uh Gregory Gry seems really good in the spirit deck. Can use the beyond as a replacement to the original. So if you use the beyond, if we look at the back of parallel gym. You do not need to use the advanced replacements, but it's in addition to everything else. It's in addition to everything else. Guiding Spirit to just double down on the Geist. Henry Wan, I probably still wouldn't want to play him there. Jeremiah Kirby seems insane. They have to be uh, nine different allies, notably. It's nine different ally assets, so you can't like double up. He actually, notably, I, I saw this on our Discord, he actually can play Jessica Hyde just normally. I mean, I, I would just take a Leo DeLuca and just get... F yeah, no, th there's a lot of juice here. The only problem is that I can definitely see him, like, if, if you are bringing him to a random event, he's going to ruin a lot of people's day. Same when Susie released, like my dude, it's free and printable. I actually love Susie. I think she's a very fun investigator to play. Honestly, I think people just don't like having fun anymore. Uh, what happens to the dead ghosts? They go to the bottom of your beyond deck. Uh, spirits are always discarded to the bottom of the spirit deck. So they'll go, medical students seem sick. You can bring more than 10 choices to a random event for just in case. That's a great way of handling that. Yeah, that's that's really smart. Um, so yeah, they'll, whenever they're discarded, they'll always go to the bottom of your spirit deck. So you will see them again in the order in which they died as well. Notably though, there is still the Vengeful Shade. How does that look? What do you mean? Uh, spirits are always discarded to the bottom of the spirit deck. So then does this guy go? Does this guy go into your deck then, or does he go to the spirit deck? I'm going to imagine the idea is that he goes back to the spirit deck. 
Yeah, this reminds me a lot of the Watcher from Another Dimension, which I feel like Jim can deal with. I think he's. I also think he's part of the Spirit deck. Yeah, I imagine that as well. Medical student's sick. I mean, Mr. Rook is also kind of just sweet. Actually, I think Mysterious Raven is some sick tech in there. Okay, hear me out, right? Mysterious Raven, he basically means that you get additional time with the allies that you want, right? So Mysterious Raven kind of can just, like, eat it when you don't want him anymore. Priest of Two Faiths, awesome as well. This is, I mean, this seems like really cool deck building. I like the hell out of it. One Sled Dog. Uh, on that point, no, Stray Cat will sit in a very similar spot to the Raven Will. I think Stray Cat is also kind of just a really good option for the Spirit deck. Because of that. Just like anything that can discard itself is really good. Yeah, this is just the Allies. We haven't even looked at the Curse stuff yet. So our I would, yeah, I would say Treasure Hunter and uh, Hired Muscle are also really good for that. You basically, it's like you basically got a free event that said, like you got like a free, um, what's that? Intrepid, right? Summon Doggy seems to work because you're not playing them. Whoa, ho, 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 ho. Interesting. Yeah. So uh, Evil Dog, that seems kind of fun. Don't play Tetsuo. Tetsuo is not good here. I think Witting Green is a nice one too. If you're looking for your stuff, some stuff. I think this is really cool. I think this is really sick. Um, okay, let's just read the rest of this. Ghost Hunting. The Beyond and the Spirit Dark are an essential part of Jim's parallel scenario laid to rest. Called to Hangman's Hill on the word of, of medium Jean Devereaux. Jim Culver may, must lay the weary souls of the lost to rest as he searches for his father's spirit. During a search, Jim must follow Jean, um, um, or Jean. I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, probably Jean. Uh, okay, I'm not going to worry about that. Select like the Spirit of Disturbances and draw heretics out from the beyond to fulfill the last request. Players will need to co own a copy of both the core set and the Circle Undone campaign expansion to use the Wages of Sin and other encounter sets. Unlike in Wages of Sin, however, the true enemy is not the Spectral Watcher, but the Ravenous Spirits. Ooh, that's cool art. Um, who lie in wait to thwart Jim and John's endeavors. Notably, John is an ally. Sorry, an enemy. Uh, let's just talk about that. <laughs> I suspect a plot twist to happen, especially with that art. Were all the allies for brain boost? Yeah, I think it's just Brother Xavier. My spirits will be laid to rest. Only time will tell. Oh, so he gets. So he gets a parallel. He gets a parallel um, investigator. Sorry, it's a, a, a challenge scenario. Okay. I've never played one of these, and I probably will never play one of these, but, you know, that's happy. So, I'm going to look at the curse cards in a second, but are you guys telling me that we're going to be getting another parallel investigator at the end of the month? So, we're getting two parallel investigators this month? Month? So we're getting two? That's pretty exciting, isn't it? That's kind of fun. Fatality. Gabriel Bardo, thank you for using your Twitch Prime and welcome to the Golden Table. It's a pleasure to have you. So uh, a lot of people thought this was Jim, but I think with the knife, we might be looking at Zoe here. They might be trying to foreshadow that. Uh, I mean, that's exciting. Two parallels in one month. Zoe, Rex, or Jenny left? Yeah, it's got to be at this point now... Uh, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> That's not what I wanted. I thought it was being so coy searching it like that. All right, give me curse. XP less than uh, less than five. Yeah, so like they have a bunch of uh, Arkham events that are happening leading up to Arkham Knights. Um, and on the 30th, we're getting a parallel investigator. Which is a Monday. So I can do the, I can read the article on Tuesday on stream on Halloween. Yeah. That's great. That's super sick. I'm doing something wrong. Okay, well, I'll just do it like this. Give me just 
We'll just ignore the five ones. Okay. Is it? It's cursed. It's cursed. Yeah, so actually, well, a third parallel, right? So on October 30th, as we near the end of the week of horror, a new parallel investigator will find themselves on our website for print and play. I assume that they don't mean, uh, actually, it's Jim on the 13th, and he's also going to be there on the 30th, you know? It's cursed. Okay, and then I think I can do that. Let's go. I'm a genius. All right. So Lucky Penny, I have to just look at this for a second. No, they're just discarded. So none of them are ever defeated. Okay. So because I was looking at Cursed Skull here, but none of his allies are like defeatable. They're discardable. Okay. Lucky Penny, Armageddon, Armageddon, Bengal, Jinxes, Blasmus Covenant. I think Blasmus Covenant would be really good. Actually, probably bad. You actually probably want False Covenant in this deck. I'm going to wager. I feel like he would want False Covenant. Uh, blood will have blood. Butterfly effect. Cryptic Grimoire. Cursed Aeons. I mean, he had this anyway. I mean, I think him with the curse spells are going to be kind of sick. They are very expensive, though. Deep Knowledge obviously is great. Favor of the Moon would be huge. Faustian Bargain is, I mean, it's nice. He had that anyway, but this is like, there's added synergy on top of all this. <sighs> Gaze of Arach. I'd get behind this, yo. That seems kind of fun. I would just use this to kill my uh, weakness enemy, my little, my damn spirit. Probably Blasphemous Covenant. If you cancel the token, then the curse spells don't work. You you don't get your trumpet. I I, I think though. I, I think that um with Blasphemous Covenant, the problem is is that his uh new weakness it could like sorry not dark ritual, um the final rhapsody you actually can like just get absolutely destroyed by curse uh, tokens. So I think that leaving them in there is bad. Um so I, if you're gonna run, I I think actually probably the best thing is that um. You want to, like, not... <laughs> you want to, like, not have curse tokens in there. So maybe potentially no Covenant if you don't want to ignore them. Is he playable without the Innsmouth expansion? You'll need the Innsmouth expansion to get curse tokens. All right, Vengeful Shade. You might fight or, fight or evade this enemy. Yeah, so the um, Gaze of Arax is not going to work if he's not... Or if you're not already failed to fight him. Honestly, I just not run the advanced cards. Oh, but his freaking trumpet. His freaking trumpet is insane. That's so freaking good. It's it's insane. <laughs> if you can get this in play, it's absolutely disgusting. Oh my god. Anyways, let's keep going. Nightmare Bobble, justify the means. Precious mementos. Let's go. He only gets one, though. You can play you for multiple reasons. Priest of Two Faiths. I mean, Ristrad's always a good time. Spirit of Humanity, I think, would be really nice. Because then you could play... I think he plays, like, Spirit of Humanity and Paradoxical Covenant very well. Also, Spirit of Humanity does make his weakness a little bit softer. I mean, I, I like Mr. Rook for his ally deck, his spirit deck, just because it can help you potentially fish out your Rhapsody before you fill it with too many curses. Stirring up trouble? Uh, yes, please. Don't mind if I do. Chthonian Stone is kind of sick as well, but they just take up your hand slots. Hungering Blade? Okay, and curse stuff's neat. I mean, he's going to get more curse stuff in the new expansion that's coming out. I dig it. Parallel Gym. They really buried the lead, though. <laughs> it's real. I, I love it. I was like, yeah, okay, so Jim, it's fine. It's not, I was like, this is a good, like, I like the design, but I was like, he doesn't really feel very parallel-y. And then, lo and behold, uh, yeah, also, you get... 10, you get 9 allies you get to bring back from the dead, you know? Um, 
Yeah. Sweet! So, if you're watching this on YouTube, and also if you're watching this on Twitch, this came out of nowhere, and I did not have plans for this in my schedule. So, it's kind of really just throwing the whole thing for a loop. So, my plan is to do a deck building session, and, uh, like a deck uh, video, and also a gameplay video for Parallel Gym in the near future. So, keep your eyes open for that, um, but... Honestly, this was such a twist that I did not see it coming. So it might be a while until those hit the channel, especially because we also apparently have another Parallel Investigator coming out at the end of the month, which I've already put into my schedule. So Parallel Jim, you sneaky son of a bitch. You came and just like threw things for a loop. I love it though. I think this is a really cool um, character design and I'm excited to play with this. I think it's kind of fun. Um, do any of the parallels have actual different stat lines? Daisy. Parallel Daisy is the only one I can think of off the top of my head. I think also Parallel Agnes has different, um, horror and damage soak as well. They're flipped due to the thing. Parallel P2. I suppose he does, doesn't he? Okay. That's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. As I said, keep your eyes open. There'll be more Parallel Gym stuff in the future. But otherwise, have a good one. Thanks for watching. And as always... Oh, GG's.